Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we will set up the NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit to run from a USB drive. Let's get started. There are a couple of reasons to use a USB drive over the built-in micro SD card. The first reason is speed. USB drives are much faster than SD cards. The second reason is reliability as SD cards tend to have wear issues with extended use. If you have applications which require a lot of disk use, you should really consider using a USB drive. Here's a little explanation of what we are going to do today. In order to run the Jetson Nano from a USB drive, we are going to do what is called pivot the root. The Jetson Nano will boot from the micro SD card, and then at the end of the boot process, we'll set the root file system to the USB drive. That way, effectively, everything runs from the USB drive, but we still need a micro SD card to boot the machine. The simple explanation for why we cannot currently boot straight to a USB drive is that the bootloader does not understand USB 3. The Nano uses USB 3 for connecting devices. If I gave you a more technical description, then I would end up having night terrors for a week. Suffice it to say, it no work right now. Here's a selection of USB drives. This is your typical thumb drive. Just up front, thumb drives are not a good candidate for this method as they do not have good wear characteristics. This is a hard disk drive. This one is about two terabytes. It's probably the most reliable over a long period of time. This is a SATA SSD. This one's about 256 gigabytes. This will require a special adapter to go to USB. It looks like this. I'll leave a link in the description below to all these devices. And then finally, here's a USB SSD. This is the one that we'll use for our demonstration. This one happens to be about 500 gigabytes. It's a little hard to tell from the camera. This one is the thickest, this one's in between, and this one's the flattest. In this video, we're using a 500 gigabyte SSD. You know how we love our GBs. This is a four step process. The method is pretty much the same for any given USB drive choice. The first step is to download, compile, and install the kernel to include some extra firmware. This is a mandatory step which allows the kernel to handle the bootloader handoff to the USB drive. The second step is to format and prepare a USB drive for installation. The third step is to copy the contents of the root file system from the micro SD card to the USB drive. And the final step is to modify the external Linux configuration file to tell the Nano to hop over to the USB drive when it is booting. Okay, our first step is to download, compile, and install the kernel. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named root on USB. Let's clone that repository, grab the repository address, let's switch over to that repository's directory. Now let's build the kernel. This will take a while. We compiled our kernel image and placed it here in slash boot slash image. You will probably want to make a backup of it so you do not have to compile it again at a later time. Also note that we made a backup of the original image and we place it in root on USB. Sounds like some kind of college fight song or something. Root on USB. At this point, we're going to reboot to make sure that our new image works. Will miracles never cease? It looks like it worked. Okay, let's open up a terminal. The second step is to format and prepare a USB drive for installation. I have our disk drive plugged in. Notice that it does not show up here in the sidebar. Let's open up the disks application. Here it is, 500 GBs. 
when you get your disk drive, it may be formatted, it may not be. In general, they are not formatted for Linux. So you should go through this process. Let's format the disk. And we want to go with compatible with modern systems and hard disks. Format. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, please. Now we want to assign a partition. This will be where we place our root FS. And let's make it, give it a little extra room there at the end. Next, volume name, nano SSD 500. That sounds fast. And we want to set it for use with Linux systems, ext4. Now create. I like this part. The disk is okay. Let's make sure we mount our USB drive. There it is. Let's switch back over to the root on USB directory. Let's turn on our system monitor. That's always fun to watch. We are now on the third step. We are going to copy the contents of the root file system from the micro SD card to the USB drive. Let's use the convenience script, copy root to USB. You can pass either the directory where you want to copy to or the volume name. Let's do the volume name. I like it. It sounds fast. This installs rsync and then does the copy. This will take a while. Now we are finished with the copy. Okay, now we're on the fourth and final step. Let's tell the Nano where our new root is. Let's clear this off. Let's take a look at root on USB. You can see in the repository that we have a sample extlinux.configuration file. Let's open it up. This is what we want to change our configuration to. Let's switch over to that directory. It is. Let's make a copy of this. And let's edit. We need sudo here because this is a system level directory. And basically what we want to do is say, make a copy of this. We'll call this SD card. And our primary one we want to change from booting from the SD card, which is this. to the Nano SSD 500, which is SDA1. Make sure we save this. Close it. And now, the moment of truth. We will reboot the system. Fingers crossed. Desktop city. Uncross your fingers. What's wrong with you? This is science. And now you can tell that we are on the SSD because the SD card is here. And our home is here. Free space. 440 gigabytes. If you have issues when you reboot the system, you may need the serial console to help you debug. I'll leave a link up here. Let's do some benchmarking. We're in the disks application. Let's do the SD card reader first. Start benchmark. Start benchmark.
we can see we get about 87 megabytes per second. Average access time 0.52 milliseconds. And here's a USB hard disk drive. It is not formatted as Linux. Let's take a look at it. So you can see kind of what we would expect. The SD card is solid state, so you expect it to be performant. I don't know how much of this trail off here at the end is because it's uh, formatted NTFS, but you can see up here that it's in the 100, 115 megabytes per second range here. And then average access time is kind of all over the place. This is what you would expect in a mechanical device versus the other ones which are solid state. Let's try old Nano SSD 500. Let's see how fast it is. Start benchmarking. We can see it's quite a bit faster here. We have a average read rate of 367 megabytes per second and average access time of 0 0.30 milliseconds. I have attached a 256 gigabyte SATA drive through the USB port. Let's try that out. So it's about the same. When we look at the solid state drives, they are limited to the bandwidth of the USB 3.0, which is about five gigabits per second. There you have it. Now you're running off the USB disk drive. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.